here's the example from the previous video. And in the previous video, I showed you how to actually go look at memory, and we saw the instances of each time we called recurse, the instances would stack up on the stack. That as we return, they would unwind from the stack and pop off the top. We saw the LIFO, uh, last in, first out behavior of the stack, and that was pretty neat. But, you know, getting gnarly with the RAM, go looking at the RAM and checking out the stack pointer and keeping track of all that low-level stuff. And if you don't want to learn assembly, that's fine. You can stay in C-sharp land. Let me show you a good debugging tool to allow you to do that. Let me hit F10 here and start our program up. We're going to call recurse, pass a 3 in for I, so let me hit F11, which will step into that call, F11, and we instantiate C, and we check I, and then we're going to recurse again. Now before I go any further, I'm going to click Debug, Windows, Call Stack, and I've positioned it here on the right. You can see that we were in Main, and now we are in Recurse. All right, And now we're going to go further and do Recurse again, and I'm going to push F11 here to step into it. So F11, notice over here we have yet another Recurse. All right, We started with Main, we called Recurse once, but then Recurse called Recurse again. Okay, and again we F10, F10, I, I is 2 minus 1, that's the next one's going to give us a 1 here, so F, I'm going to F11 here, keep your eye up here, and watch, we'll gain another recurse, F11, and you can see the call stack growing, that's actually kind of nice, and a little more convenient than going into the memory window for sure. Let me F10 here, I is not yet 0, we're going to do it one more time, so pay attention, when I hit F11, we're going to gain yet another recurse, F11. So this is pretty neat. We have all these recurses sitting on the, we call this the call stack, right? And each one of these lines here that I'm highlighting is a stack frame. Right, we call that a stack frame. I, I showed that to you in memory. We saw the local C and I, and I highlighted them in memory. But we also saw some other data which if you really want to learn the gnarliness of it, go watch the assembly programming playlist. I go into that kind of stuff. But that's part of the stack frame as well, that extra stuff. So we saw the local variables, the value types especially, they go on the stack. And they are part of the stack frame. Now I can F10 here and I is going to be zero, so we'll return there and watch. Every time I hit F11, our debugger symbol is going to keep here. And we just F11, F11, you see these recurses popping off the stack till eventually we are back in main. Now let me show you something else really cool about this call stack debugging feature. I'm going to restart the app and F11 and I'm actually going to put a breakpoint on return and hit F5 and allow the debugger to just call all the way down until we have all of our recurses here. Now another term for these stack frames is activation in instance. Okay, remember I was saying we were, we were instantiating our functions or our methods. We were instantiating them. Okay, we can call these activation instances. And that's what I learned in my programming languages class uh, back in my undergraduate. And then I was asked that in a job interview. What do you call it? And I answered activation instance. And they looked at me with this weird look on their face. They were looking for call stack. Or not call stack. They were looking for stack frame. All right, this whole thing all together makes the call stack. Each individual instance here, activation instance, another thing we call that, and generally it's more often called a stack frame. Cool part about this tool, I can double click on it anywhere I want to, and it will take me to the context of that location. Right? For example, I, I just let me double click on the second one and hover over I now, and we can see that I is 2. You get this green arrow here showing, hey, this is this is when you return this is where we're going to end up but in that context of that green call there i is 2 all right let me double click on this one now and look at this i is is 3 remember we went 3 2 1 we started with 3 and then 2 and 1 let's jump to 1 double click here and now i'm in the context of that call so i'm going to hover over it and see one like so and this is really helpful especially when you get an exception and your stack your call stack's really deep, you're like, oh, what caused that to happen? You can double click around in the debugger and examine the local variables that are that exist and the things that you passed in and that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, whenever you double click on any of these, you get that nice green arrow. See the green arrow showing you where you will return to when you come back to that part of the 
stack frame. It's always the bottom in this case because we did a purely recursive function, but we could have called other functions in here. Um, but then when I call this one at the top of the stack, the green arrow goes away. We're back to the context that we were, we were originally at, and i is now 0. And I can even double-click on main, and look, we're back to main. And when we return from recurse, we will end up right here. So nice, cool debugging tool. Uh, I use it often, for sure. Let me just, for good measure, we can watch these come off the top, like so.